Hello, welcome you all back to the presentation on design of tension members. This is the fourth session that we are trying to have on design of tension members. I hope you all have enjoyed uh, learning the, the concepts that we have in design of tension members okay, as we have discussed all those things in the previous three sessions. In this session, we are just trying to go ahead and then uh, work out some numerical examples. So, before that, I would again just try to draw your attention to the various things that we have covered in the previous presentation. So, let us try to look into this uh, aspects that we have covered. So, we have started with introduction analysis of uh, axially tension members, factors affecting the strength of uh, tension member, modes of failure, again three important modes, I hope you remember that and how do we calculate the design strength connected with each of these failure modes, obviously we will be taking the least of that as the design strength of the member and then uh, concepts of uh, shear lag. Okay. It is a very important uh, thing that we need to understand okay, in case of uh, eccentric connections and how to minimize the effect of uh, shear lag that is through uh, lug angles. Correct. So, what is lug angle and all those things we have discussed, how to calculate the forces to design the lug angle and its connection. Now, we are trying to start this discussion okay, in this presentation that is typical numerical examples okay, that we have in design of tension members. Okay. So, let us start okay, the first example that we have here. Okay. Now, this is with respect to uh, a plate connected to a, uh, a gusset plate. Correct? Okay. So, we have a plate okay, connection between a plate and a gusset. Let us look into the example that we are trying to talk about. Okay, find the design tensile strength of a plate 120 by 8 mm. So, that is the width and that is the thickness. So, the overall width of the plate okay, is 120 and the thickness of the plate is 8 mm. So, this is the plate that we are trying to talk about and the plate is trying to extend. So, we have cut it here. Okay. So, this is one edge okay, which gets connected to the gusset. Right, connected to a 12 mm thick gusset plate. So, thickness of the gusset plate is 12 mm, thickness of the plate is 8 mm. Right. So, it is connected through by uh, these bolts. Okay. It is a bolt connected member. So, we have as you can clearly notice here 6 bolts okay, are uh, uh, used to connect the plate with the uh, gusset plate in this particular case. Right. The yield strength and ultimate strength of the material of the both the materials is 250 mega Pascals and uh, 400 mega Pascals respectively yield strength and ultimate strength. Correct? Right? The diameter of the bolt is 16 millimeters. So, we have used 16 millimeters. So, all details with respect to the connection in the sense okay, the distance between the bolt holes okay, right, okay, in this gauge direction and the pitch direction. So, everything is given in this particular case. So, we are trying to understand what is the maximum tensile force okay, that this particular plate okay, can take is what we are trying to understand. Correct? So, I hope you have understood this. So, all details are given. So, we are trying to find okay, the tensile strength okay, carried by okay, this particular plate. What is maximum tensile strength that it can take? Correct? So, this is type 1 problem. The first thing that you need to understand is okay, we are trying to say that that particular connection can fail in three different ways, three different ways. That means, gross section yielding, yielding of the gross cross section away from the connection and then net section rupture at the connections you can expect okay, the, the plate to tear off correct? and the block shear failure, the connection itself can fail. Correct. So, please understand we are trying to understand that that connection 
or that uh, uh, tension member can fail in three different modes okay and basically we are trying to calculate okay what is the tensile force required okay to have this kind of failure and failure number 2 and failure number 3 represented as TDG, TDN and TDB, G4, D4 design strength and G4, okay, gross yielding, okay, that is yielding of gross cross section, N for net section rupture and then B for block shear failure. So, first having computed all the three, so we just take the least value, we take the least value of the three and then we try to say so that is the strength okay of the member okay right? is what you need to understand i hope you are understanding this particular problem very very clearly so let us start with the first one okay yielding of gross section right yielding of gross section now what is the what is the class that you are going to mention okay so i already have talked about okay we just try to open 6.2 okay you get this expression expression to calculate tdg so, how do you calculate TDG? It is the product of Fy into Ag by gamma m0, right? So, Fy into Ag, stress into area, force, okay? And this is limit state design, correct? You are going to underestimate that value. So, you have to divide by a value more than 1. So, this is 1 point, okay, 1 0, okay? Please understand, okay? If you are talking about yielding, then we have gamma m0 or m0, okay, which is 1.10. So, in this problem, please understand Fy is given yield strength of the material, which is 250 is what is given megapascals, gamma m0, 1.10, correct? So, you have those numbers, these are given, these are given, correct? Now, we have to calculate Ag. What is Ag? Ag is the gross cross section area of the plate. What do you mean by gross cross section area? It is the total area of the plate itself. You need to understand, okay, total area of the plate and where do you expect this particular uh, failure to occur? O away from the end section, correct? It occurs away from the end section, correct? So, that means if I just try to take a section somewhere here, section somewhere here, xx, so this is where, okay, the plate is assumed to fail, the plate is assumed to fail. So, when I say Ag, it is basically the gross area of the plate okay, is what you are going to calculate. How do you calculate the gross area? It is quite simple. So, you just try to calculate width of the plate multiplied by the thickness of the plate. As we know, the width of the plate is 120 mm and the thickness of the plate is 8 mm. So, the product of width into thickness of the plate, okay, will give you the value of gross area, right? So, 120 into 8, okay, will give you the value of Ag. So, it is a very simple calculation that we are trying to do here. So, that is we try to multiply Fy into G 250 into that is 960 that is total area of the plate divided by 1.10. Okay. So, we just try to get the value in Newtons you divide by 1000 that will give you the value of kilonewton. So, we have got the value of TDG which is nothing but 218.18 kilonewtons. Correct. So, I hope you have understood this particular problem very, very clearly, right? So, this is uh, uh, the first part. That means, we have assumed that the failure occurs through gross yielding and we have used class 6.2, simple expression. It is available in the code. Open the code, use the formula, substitute the numbers, you get the value of TDG, right? Now, let us try to go to the second possible kind of failure. The second possible failure that we have is, okay, net section rupture correct net section rupture and this happens in plate we are talking about it occurs in the plate so net section rupture in plate is given in okay the next class that is class 6.2 okay probably 6.2.1 correct 6.2.1 correct so this formula is given okay which tells you tdn which is nothing but 0.9 fu an by gamma m1 correct is it all right? So, stress multiplied by area, correct? So, this is the net area, not the gross area because when rupture has to occur, okay, it occurs I mean, at a cross section which is relatively weak. So, in bolted connections, as you can clearly see, you have made some bolts, holes. So, you can expect that the failure would be al along that path. So, look at this. So, this is the connection that we are trying to talk about. So, please understand, okay, we are trying to say that it is going to fail something like that, 
okay so that is the width available minimum width multiplied by thickness so that would be the value of a n cross section okay net area okay of failure this is how the failure is going to occur okay so it can also occur here generally it is going to occur at this point because this is where you expect maximum force to get transferred at this point so you can expect that possibly it is going to fail at, at, at that particular bolt line is what you need to understand correct so uh, uh, ultimate stress so this is given okay so f u is given okay gamma m1 is given these values are given okay f u is 400 mega pascals okay gamma m1 1.25 i make clear so when you're just talking about f u it is gamma m1 if it is f y it is gamma m0 correct you need to understand okay you are going to that is the psf that we are trying to talk about multiplied by a n so how do you get the value of a n in this particular case now first thing is you have to calculate what is the diameter of the bolt hole okay dh okay what is the diameter of the bolt hole so we have said that the the size of the bolt we are using is 16 millimeters correct so generally we try to uh, assume that there would be a small uh, when we just try to do the hole okay the the periphery around the hole okay would be ineffective to resist the stress and then please look at this we are trying to increase the diameter of the bolt by 2 mm so we are trying to say that the die of the bolt hole is 18 mm correct the diameter, diameter of the hole is 18 mm okay that means okay so 18 mm is ineffective over there basically right so this is what we are trying to say now in this cross section how many bolt holes do we have here in this section two bolt holes correct what is the total width that we have here 120 correct from 120 you deduct two diameters correct 18 and 18 that gives you the net width multiplied by thickness that will give the a n net area available here. So, you can clearly see a n is okay that is total width 120 okay this is the number of holes that we have here along this section 2 and that is a bolt hole correct this gives you the net width multiplied by thickness 8 mm. So, that will give you the value of a n. So, the value of a n is 672 which we are going to substitute here that is 672 correct. So, f u given gamma m 1 given okay in the numerical problem we have calculated a n correct using this particular failure section width multiplied by thickness width available okay which where we have deducted uh, the the diameter of the holes we got this okay and then we are trying to even uh, this is the formula 0 0.9 to further reduce that in this case okay some factor again one more factor of safety okay so that will give you the value of tdn and uh, we have converted that to kilonewtons by dividing it by 1000 so, this is the second possible failure that we have assumed and we have calculated the failure load under uh, the second case that is nothing but net section rupture. Okay, if at all this happens, this kind of failure happens. So, at what load force, okay, tensile force, this is going to happen and this is how you calculate. I hope this is quite simple, right? You can easily manage with this. Okay, now let us go to the last type of failure that we are trying to have here, okay, that is case number 3 block shear failure correct block shear failure right i make clear the connection itself can fail the end the, the, the end connection okay that means the two members can separate now how do we assume the uh, failure path in this case as we said so we we try to take the failure path okay along the line of bolts along the line of bolts correct something like that correct so it is going to happen like that and then please understand okay so you can assume that it's going to happen like that okay in this case that is also 30 that is also 30 and that is 60 some of that so either it can go like that or it can come like that so you can always take the lesser distance okay in this particular case i make clear did you understand right for example okay if it is 60 or less than 60 you can expect this to happen if it is more than 60 this failure can go outwards is what you need to understand okay so to compare that and then you have to assume an a, a, an appropriate kind of a failure path okay so important to assume, uh, assume that okay the failure goes along the line of bolts like this and then they get connected so once this happens please understand in this case this entire thing right get separated and this plate okay can just come out okay something like that it can come out like that did you understand? So, this is the failed plate, okay. So, where you can expect failure to have occurred, okay. So, if this gets cut, this is how you see the failure of the plate. Now, look at this, we have three planes, 
we have three failure planes okay failure occurring in this direction that means direction one two and three three failure planes okay the force is like this that is this force this is p correct force p so you can expect okay the force okay like that and again like that so you can notice that okay these are shear plates and that is tension plane right i hope this is very very clear okay for you very clear for you correct is it all right very clear over here or that okay now let us try to look at this so that means shear planes ab and cd tension plane bc correct right i hope this is very clear correct all the dimensions are given over here now with this information correct we have to calculate two values of tdb tdb1 and tdb2 as given in the code and for you to calculate use that particular formula correct you have to calculate four areas that is net or gross area for shear failure net area for shear failure and gross area for tensile failure and net area for tensile failure correct so let us try to see how we calculate these four areas in the next slide so i have just uh, uh, again uh, i mean uh, borrowed that particular figure i have again pasted that so let us try to do this so four areas okay so shear failure area tension failure area for shear failure area we are trying to have two things gross and net even for tension failure area okay planes tension failure planes we have got gross area and net area so that is let's try to talk about avg v stands for shear and g for gross as you know okay ab and cd are shear planes shear failure planes so just try to when we say gross it is a distance from a to the center of the bolt to the center of this bolt hole okay so what is the distance 30 plus 60 plus 60 correct is what you have here okay so please understand this line ends here that line ends here okay this is not required that is not required so distance from a to b is 30 plus 60 plus 60 correct so that will be what totally 150 so look at this so we have 150 correct so 150 multiplied by the thickness of the plate correct will give you the gross area of ab gross area of dc also is similar correct on both these planes we have shear so we are trying to just multiply by thickness and then 2 why 2 because there are two planes ab and cd both are similar so that will give you the total value of avg which is 2400 millimeter square correct the next thing is you have to calculate the net shear area net shear area so again from this width 120 that is uh, 60 plus 60 plus 30 i have to deduct okay so this hole okay this hole and half of this hole okay you got half of that half of that okay d plus d plus d by 2 that is 2.5 d correct 2.5 d so from this that is 150 you have to deduct 2.5 diameter of the hole diameter of the bolt is 16 okay we have accounted 2 mm in excess is it all right okay tolerance is what we are trying to say so that would be 2.5 into 18 what is 18 diameter of the hole is what you need to understand diameter of the hole so 2.5 times diameter of the hole okay will give you these deductions okay and you are going to deduct that from 150 that will give you the summation of this and this and that correct and then you are going to multiply by the thickness okay 8 mm and then you are trying to multiply it by 2 why 2 because you got one shear plane here and another shear plane over there correct is it all right so that will give you the value of okay avn right so we have calculated the gross area and net area of the shear failure planes we repeat that for tension planes so as you notice here okay so tension plane right so tension plane right in this particular case right tension plane in this particular case is bc right so all you have to understand is 60 correct so distance from this point to this point is 60 right correct center of the hole to center of the hole if you are calculating gross tension area atg it is just 60 multiplied by thickness 8 and there is only one tension plane only bc you do not need to multiply 2 in this case 
So, you can say there is 60 okay, multiplied by 8 will give you ATG okay, gross area right, for tension failure plane. Now, if you want to calculate the net area for tension failure plane, you need to understand I have to deduct half hole here and another half hole here correct, half hole here, half hole here from 60 that would be one full hole D by 2, D by 2 is D. So, from 60 I need to direct D, diameter of the hole not bolt, diameter of the hole is 18, 1 8 correct, is not it. So, I have to deduct from 60 okay, I will be deducting 1 D, 1 times diameter of the hole okay, that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1 okay, and then you have to multiply by thickness okay, that should give you the value of ATN. Okay, always you can understand that okay, the, the net area is smaller than the gross area obviously because you are going to deduct for some openings. Okay. So, we can just try to look at into the calculations is it all right. So, you will understand that it is a very simple task okay, to calculate all these things. So, just try to draw an appropriate sketch okay, right, and you can easily calculate all these four areas right, gross and net areas for tension failure planes and shear failure planes okay, which will be used in the equations okay, that we are going to see in the next slide. Okay. So, if you just try to look at this, okay. so we have from class okay, that is 641 sorry okay, class 641 correct class 641 correct. So, we have two uh, expressions TDB1 and TDB2 is it all right TDB1, TDB2 you will be calculating two values. Okay, probable values of failure in block shear. So, we are trying to have a combination of okay, shear that is gross and net for shear and tension failure. Look at this. So, we have got AVG gross, okay, we just talk about gross area for shear, it will be net area for tension. Okay, and when you are looking at the gross area, you will be multiplying by yield stress and then you will be dividing by the appropriate PSF that is gamma M0. Correct. Similarly, net area, when we have net area we will always be multiplying by the ultimate stress, if talking about ultimate stress we will be dividing by gamma m1 1.25 with all these uh, further reductions that we are trying to have here okay, and that will give you okay, the value of TDB1. Now, look at this, so this is given, okay, this is given, this is given and that is given, all these things are mentioned in the numerical problem. Okay. We did calculate these things. Okay, in the previous slide, in the previous slide, AVG ATN substitute simplify get this value. I have divided by 1000 to convert it to Newton KN from Newton, and this is the value that we have got for TDB1. Okay, coming to TDB2, that is the second probable value. Okay, so we are going to just instead of using AVG, we are trying to use AVN, correct? And here ATG, we are using okay, that is ATN, we are using ATG. So, we have swapped from gross to net, from net to gross we have here and we have used the appropriate uh, term okay, that is uh, stresses. So, all you have to do is look at 641, you do not need to remember these uh, expressions, you have to look at code 641, cross 641, these equations are available, okay. just substitute simplify, you get the value of TDB2, this is TDB2, you get the value of TDB2, correct. So, TDB1 says Okay, this kind of uh, 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 possibility will give you uh, a value of 411.69 kN and this kind of a possibility will give you a value of 388.44 kN. So, you need to compare and then you have to take the smaller value of the two, correct, is not it. So, that means if this force okay, can cause failure like this and this force cause failure like this, so obviously this is the force which will reach first and then you can say that, so this combination, right. Okay, is the correct value of uh, force for block shear and I am going to just try to take the least of the two which happens to be 388.44 kN that is resulted as TDB correct. So, that is you are trying to pick the minimum of the two right. Now, we have assumed three different types of failures and for all these three different failures I have got the value like for TDG I have got this value, okay, for TDN I have got this value, for TDB I have got these values. So, we have said that three possible failures can occur and for that to occur these are the appropriate forces for gross cross section yielding it will be 218.18 at this force it is going to fail like this at this force it is going to fail by net rupture okay, of critical sections and for this force okay, the connection is going to fail. So, look at this 
of these three the least is okay tdn tdn and we are trying to say okay the design strength of that particular connection okay is the least of these three which will be 193.54 kn so i hope you are trying to understand the logic okay that we have that we are trying to follow here right so we just try to continue this kind of uh, uh, i mean uh, steps okay in all almost all the ki kinds of uh, uh, tension members i hope you have learned uh, uh, the, the basic uh, concept here okay which has been uh, uh, clearly uh, illustrated okay through this example right so let us try to go to the uh, next example now in the next example i'm just trying to take a plate as you are trying to see here okay a, 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 a different type of plate where the kind of connection we are trying to take is something different okay in the previous case okay the connection was chain uh, sort okay chain like this so if you just try to look at the pattern of uh, connection okay so the bolt okay the bolt was something like this okay this was the kind of connection we had talked about correct the bolts okay like this this, this we call as chain bolts okay right now we are trying to take a different uh, kind of uh, connection here okay it is something like staggered it is something like staggered kind of connection okay now if you have a plate here okay of uh, size okay 160 by 8 okay we have a plate of size 160 by 8 so that is 160 width okay thickness is 8 okay right connected to a 10 mm a gusset plate okay by means of uh, uh, the six bolts okay so all the dimensions okay are specified obviously they are in millimeters correct so we want to calculate okay i'm just trying to i'm a bit particular here okay net rupture of, of the plates okay at what uh, value of uh, tensile force okay this is going to fail by net rupture okay please understand okay in the previous case we took all the three possibilities where here i am just trying to uh, be a bit specific saying that okay for uh, the plate to fail under net rupture under net rupture correct so what is the force correct that is required to be applied what is the force that is required to be applied i am just trying to be a bit specific okay i am not trying to uh, take the other two cases i am just trying to take a specific case here net rupture why because i am just trying to make you understand to use a particular formula okay right to calculate the net area in this particular case right and obviously the values of uh, the yield strength and the uh, ultimate strength of the uh, material is given in this particular case right okay so let us try to look at this so i'm just trying to zeroing straight away on net section rupture net section rupture of the plate now how do we calculate net section rupture okay you have to remember the appropriate clauses you have to just remember the appropriate clauses correct is it all right so 6.2 okay open out 6.21 if i am correct so 6.21 gives you this expression okay we already used this expression even in the previous problem okay you don't need to remember any of the expressions correct you just look at the clauses okay section 6 tension members okay open at that particular section and then look into this class okay so net section rupture this equation is available you have to use it and then calculate this value of tdn okay in this problem we are just calculating only tdn okay we are not even calculating tdg or any other thing okay i just want you to use one expression okay here given in in, in code okay uh, to uh, in case of uh, staggered connection okay so here anyway this is given f u u that is we have seen it as 410 in this case 410 megapascal okay it is given in this case okay and then gamma m1 1.25 okay even that is given in this particular case right the only thing that you need to understand is how to calculate an the net area right okay so this is not as straightforward as the previous case if we just try to check the previous case okay the kind of uh, uh, bolts that we had okay was straightforward like okay, like this we had bolts like this correct and we did say that we, we really said that okay the, uh, the, the the failure okay is like that i make clear it is a simple uh, uh, i mean kind of concept that we talked about here whereas in this particular case correct so it's something different okay the kind of arrangement uh, is is something different so we are trying to just see how to calculate this value of area okay so we are just trying to say how to calculate an how to calculate this an is what we are just trying to do in this particular discussion how we do this correct so since the bolts are staggered staggered we are trying to assume different failure paths 
Am I clear? Did you understand? Different failure paths are assumed. And how do we assume this? Along bolts. Okay. And then we try to compare all these paths and then take the minimum value. Is it all right? So we are trying to say, okay, it may fail like this path 1, it may fail in along path 2, it may fail along path 3. So you have to assume all sensible failure paths okay, and then arrive at the value of a n. It could be a n 1, a n 2, a n 3, etc. and then take the least of that because okay, so obviously you got minimum area available to resist that and then the stress will be maximum. Correct. So that is the uh, logic that we are trying to talk about. So we are trying to assume different failure paths whenever we have staggered bolted connections. Okay. And then all, along all these failure paths you assume you calculate the value of a n, take the minimum of that okay. and then use that in the expression calculate T d n. So that is as simple as that. Okay. So let us try to use this. Okay. Now look at this. This is the expression okay, given okay, in the same class. Okay, provided it is staggered, something like this. I make clear, not chain bolting. Now, in this particular case, we'll try. Let us assume. Okay, this is the expression that we are trying to use. Look at this. Okay, let me explain this expression. Okay, so what is? This, uh, how do we calculate? Okay, uh, the value of uh, a n net effective area, right? Net effective area, right? To resist the the uh, failure in case of uh, 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 net rupture. Okay, net rupture failure. So what is b? B is the total width of the plane, that is B, correct? So that is B, correct? B is the total width of the plane, okay? Then N times DH, N is the number of holes, okay, that are present along the failure path. Look at this, I am assuming some failure path, okay? So how many uh, holes, bolt holes are there? There is 3, so that is N equal to 3. And what is D suffix H? diameter of each hole. So how do we calculate diameter of each hole? Diameter of bolt plus 2 mm. That will give you diameter of the hole, correct? N times dh, correct? Plus sigma psi whole square by 4 gi, correct? Is it all right? Now this is present, okay? This term, okay, will be there for inclined paths. So if I have assumed some inclined paths, if I assume some inclined paths, right okay which you are going to see in my next assumption okay then this term all right should be accounted okay so that means for all inclined paths okay so this term right okay is accounted however for this path okay everything is straight correct so this is not accounted right in this case psi is the distance okay between the holes in this direction so that would be p okay right ps pitch okay spacing okay in uh, for between the holes and right this is g that is g that will be g okay we have to account this for each failure path anyway okay right now okay let's forget about this let's forget about this okay for this failure path okay now for this path 1 1 this right is not there this is not there why is it not there? Because there are no inclined failure paths assumed in this particular case. So let me say, okay, let us assume failure path along 1, 1. Though so this is 1, that is 1. Okay, I am assuming failure path along 1, 1. Correct? So let me use this particular equation. So a n equal to b. So what is b here? Total width of the plate, 160. So that is 160. Correct? Then how many bolt holes are present along this path 1, 1? 1, 2, 3, 3. Correct? I have used 3. Right. And what is the diameter of each hole dh? 18. Correct? So that is 0 because there are no inclined paths that I have assumed. So just try to multiply. Okay? Right? Cal I mean calculate this and multiply it by the thickness. That will give you the total area, net area. Okay? Assuming it is going, going to fail along 1, 1. Correct? So I hope okay, you have understood. Right? this calculation for this failure path 1 1. Now please understand I could also take this this as 2 2 right this as 2 2 and sorry this as 2 2 and this as 3 3 but you can easily understand that okay this will have a larger area than this because I am deducting 3 holes I have to deduct only 2 holes I have to deduct only 1 hole. So do not expect the failure to occur like this am I clear. <coughs> so let us try to not worry about 
uh, uh, I mean uh, failure like this and this because that will give you a larger value of an correct did you understand so we will omit that and one important thing that you need to understand is <coughs> we do not try to reverse it in this direction we do not have a pattern like this <coughs> I do not <coughs> have a pattern like this we do not do that correct we do not reverse this because okay so here the stress is more when compared to stress here correct so this is not correct is it all right so this is the correct pattern that means you should have more number of holes okay right at the beginning of the connection and less number of holes okay at the last or you can have uniform i make clear one of the two so these are things okay that you need to just uh, uh, watch okay when you are trying to do some kind of uh, uh, calculations is it all right okay so i hope uh, uh, i mean assuming failure path 1 okay we have calculated what is the area that we have here that is an1 now let us try to go to a n 2 let us go to a n 2 so that means failure along 2 2 so right what is 2 2 let us try to look at this 2 2 so 2 okay and 2 now look at this I have assumed that okay the, the crack is going to initiate or tearing is going to initiate from here to this hole to this hole and from here and from here and from here because look at this there are 4 holes there are 4 holes here so if it gets connected like this yeah it, it, it can fail this is another assumption that we are trying to make it may fail like that I make clear 4 bolt holes is what we are trying to talk about and here you can notice that we have okay an inclined path over there whenever we inclined path okay this okay has to be considered this has to be considered okay so let us try to see how we are trying to consider okay this value correct this particular case all right so let us try to do this now okay let me use this expression okay a n equal to b minus n d h plus this one okay and multiplied by t multiplied by t thickness obviously that is the total effective width effective length multiplied by thickness that will give the area so first one b right what is b width of the plate 160 right so we have 160 that is b then n d h right what is d h diameter of the hole what is diameter of the hole 18 16 plus 2 18 how many holes do we have here 1 2 3 4 4 we are going to account 4 okay right so 4 multiplied by 18 that is this one okay and look at this it is plus right it is plus right whereas here it is minus minus I very clear did you understand so you have to look at these small uh, uh, things very carefully when you are writing this plus right now how many uh, inclined line do we have here how many inclined line okay 1 and 2 that is 1 and 2 okay so this sigma i says how many so there are two i have said two okay there are two inclined lines okay and please understand they are uniform in the sense that okay in this direction distance okay from this point to this point is same even in this direction okay distance is same that is g that is p I make clear this is the distance from here to here is p distance from here to here or here to here is g correct is what you need to understand so because it's uniform i have taken two if it is not uniform you have to write this once for this and once for this you have to account it separately correct so let us start okay so let me say psi that means distance from here to here what is that value 40 that is 40 so we have 40 square divided by 4 times g so g is this one correct so g is this one so this is g correct so distance from here to here is g that is g this is psi correct so p of that correct so we are going to write this as 40 square divided by 4 times 25 40 square divided by 4 times 25 okay so 4 is a constant which you are going to use and that is for this inclined line for this inclined line again 40 square plus 4 times 25 did you understand because they are same I have taken 2 so it is 40 square divided by 4 times 25 I make clear so this will give you the net width that we have here or net length along this direction you multiply by the thickness that will give you the area that we have here okay assuming a failure like that assuming a failure like that which happens to be 960 millimeter square okay this is option 2 okay option 1 was like that option 2 is like this 
correct now let us look at option 3 okay what is option 3 so we can just try to go on assuming different options correct now in option 3 i have assumed that it may start like this okay tear off like that and tear off like that and tear off like that and again tear off like that and this so by doing this please understand i am just trying to account five bolt holes five bolt holes i make clear so in the first case we had taken only three in second case we had taken four bolt holes along the line of uh, rupture and in this case i have taken five bolt holes along the line of rupture correct so one two three four five okay and by doing so we are trying to have four inclined paths here one two three four so that will be four times you'll be accounting it four times in this particular case correct so let's try to start using this particular equation because there is inclined path so this term will be considered it will be considered for each of the individual paths correct in this case all the distance between okay the, the the two inclined paths in this direction as well as in this direction are same so we can write four times i make clear so let's start using this equation so b width of the plate 160 right that is there the next one is n times dh n times dh correct is it all right how many bolt holes do we have along this rupture one two three four five correct so the value of n here is 5 correct so we have taken it as 5 and what is dh diameter of the hole bolt diameter is 16 plus 2 mm is the tolerance okay we are just trying to have 16 plus 2 18 so diameter of each bolt hole is 18 correct it is minus is what you need to understand 160 minus 5 into 18 so the next one is plus okay so we are trying to do this for each inclined path so for each inclined path okay distance from here to here is ps so that would be 40 okay so for all inclined paths distance from here to here right in this direction is 40 and for in, for all inclined paths distance okay in this direction is 25 25 correct is it all right so we can easily notice that we can try to uh, use it okay appropriately over here right so that means 40 square okay this distance square divided by 4 times this distance square that is 4 times 25 correct psi square by 4 gi i stands for each inclined path okay in this case 4 so we are going to have 4 correct so this entire thing will give the net width in this direction okay multiplied by thickness okay multiplied by thickness that will give the area 40 I mean 1072 mm square correct now please understand in the same problem in the same problem i can in assume another failure path 44 i can assume another failure path 44 right so how i can assume right so i can say it may start from here go to this path go to this point go to this point and then come down correct i can even assume this as another failure path correct now please understand whether you are assuming this or the previous 133 it's almost the same you can easily understand so in this case i got one inclined path two inclined path three inclined path and four inclined path which i had the same numbers of inclined path even in the previous case one inclined path two inclined path three inclined path and four inclined path and the distance in this direction between these two between all inclined paths and the distance okay in this direction between all inclined path remains the same i make clear so even if you assume 4 4 a failure like this i make clear you will still end up with the same value of 1072 mm square okay it will not be different you don't get a different value in this case right so what i have what you can do is in any problem you can go on assuming okay uh, uh, logically different failure paths is it all right did you understand and for each of the failure paths okay you will be using this expression okay and then you will be calculating the value of uh, the uh, the net area okay for each of these assumed failure paths i make clear so once you have calculated the areas for all possible failure paths obviously you will be taking the minimum area because am i clear so minimum area is available to resist okay for a given failure path and you can expect that the crack will propagate 
or the rupture will, will, will take place okay, along the path which has the least area right is what we are trying to talk about. So now I had assumed three failure paths and for each of these failure paths okay, we have calculated the net area available. So you can clearly notice that okay, when we assumed the failure path uh, 1 that means along 3 bolt holes correct that is vertical line okay, no inclined line it was 848 mm square. Okay, right? Then we, when we said that the failure path will be along 4 bolt holes. I make clear here it is only 3 bolt holes, 4 bolt holes having 2 inclined uh, paths. Okay, we got it as 960 millimeter square. Correct? When we assumed 5 uh, uh, inclined paths, correct? That is 5, uh, I mean 4 inclined paths and 5 bolt holes, 5 bolt holes, 4 inclined paths, okay, the area was 1072 mm square. I make clear? So you can understand that, okay, so it is not necessary that, okay, if you have more bolt holes, right, the, the value of A n is less, not necessary. I make clear? So all you have to do is assume the failure paths properly and having assumed the failure paths, for that failure path use that expression, okay, so to calculate the value of, okay, uh, uh, A n appropriately. Now we had taken three different failure paths and for all these failure paths, we have calculated the areas A1, AN1, AN2, AN3. Now what are we trying to do? Okay, we are trying to take the minimum value, we are going to take the minimum value, we take the minimum value, correct. So the minimum value in this particular case happens to be 848 mm square, right. That was case 1, vertical path, 3 bolt holes only. Right? We did not get minimum when we talked about 4 bolt holes or 5 bolt holes, not necessary. It all depends on that P s and G. I make clear if we vary P s and G, yeah, you may get okay, the value of uh, A to be minimum okay, even along 2 or 3. Is it all right? It all depends on the values of uh, P s and G that we have uh, 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 I mean, given in that particular numerical problem. Anyway, okay, so this is how you finally arrive at the value of uh, A n. Now having arrived at the value fair, the next part is quite simple. So we will be trying to use that expression. Okay, am I clear? Given in uh, 6.2, is it all right? Okay, for plates, correct? So it is 0 0.9 Fu A n by gamma m1. So this is given 410 megapascal. Okay, gamma m1, correct? 1.25, correct? Ultimate this is gamma m1, 1.25, these are specified in the problem. Now this you have computed, okay, the value of an is, okay, that is 648 mm square. Substitute, simplify, okay, get the value of Tdn, right. I have converted, okay, the value in Newtons, kilonewtons. So you will get the value in Newtons, okay, you will be dividing it by 1000, okay, you get the value of force in Kn. Now please understand in this problem, okay, we are just trying to just calculate only the design strength due to net rupture, okay. So because the kind of uh, connection we had was something different, okay, and uh, whenever we have uh, uh, staggered bolts, okay, so we will be trying to use, okay, the expression, okay, that is uh, uh, this particular expression. So I just wanted you to be uh, familiar, okay, with respect to how to use this expression. It is quite simple. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, if you have only chain bolting, right, so only the, we have only these two terms. Now coming to this one, this is uh, generally calculated or, or we, we try to uh, uh, use this term whenever we have, uh, when, when we have inclined failure paths in the assumed uh, 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 path of failure, correct. So I hope uh, you have uh, uh, understood, correct, understood uh, uh, this particular problem, correct. So in this particular presentation, we have worked out two uh, different uh, types of problems that is both connected to plates, okay. In first problem, we had uh, seen chain uh, kind of kind chain bolts, right. So we had uh, taken all the three failure cases that is uh, 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 failure due to gross yielding, then failure due to net rupture, correct, and failure due to block uh, shear failure, correct. And we compared and then we did uh, summarize or uh, uh, finally arrive at uh, the value of TD, design strength, okay, choosing the least of the, those three computed values. Now coming to problem number two, okay, I was just more focused uh, trying to make you understand how to calculate the uh, 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 I mean design strength, 
okay, of that connection due to net section rupture, right? So where we have where we use a different formula to calculate A. So I hope uh, this was uh, uh, this presentation was quite useful to you. So we will uh, stop right now. We'll stop this presentation right now, and then we'll come back, okay? And then we'll try to take other kind of uh, problems that we have in uh, uh, design of tension members, maybe with respect to angles. Okay, and then maybe uh, bolt connection, uh, welded connection, okay, lug angles, all those things, okay, we'll try to discuss, okay, in the coming sessions. Thank you.